Hey everybody, welcome to week 10 in our Color by Number Quilt Along. My name is Caroline. I'm the author of the blog SoCanSheet.com and I'm so excited to share with you today another quilting design in a four and a half inch block. Our Color by Number quilt has 14 different fabrics in it and so we are going to quilt each design 12 times in 12 four and a half inch blocks. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just start at week one in our color by number quilt along and you'll quickly get caught up. It's lots of fun and really easy. So far we've been using both quilting rulers and doing the designs without quilting rulers and that's not gonna change. Today I wanna show you how to use this fun um, mini clamshell ruler and actually we're gonna use this like tiny baby clamshell design. It's gonna be really fun and I'll show you how this will fit perfectly into our four and a half inch block and then I'll show you how to use these two. We can give this a shot to see how the three inch clamshell will work and of course I'll show you how to do this same design without the quilting template or quilting ruler if you don't want to use it. So let's get started. So here's the first block that I'm going to fill. I'm going to put a clamshell design using this ruler or without the ruler in all of the blocks that are the same peachy orange color fabrics. Now I have a couple of fabrics here that are really similar, but I'm just going to remember that these are next to my blocks that have the geometric um, meandering design, which we did in the last video. So I'm, I think this is a good place for me to show you how I um, quilt when my block is right next to the batting. This is the edge of my quilt. This is actually the bottom edge of my quilt. So I'm just going to get started here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pretend, here, you see I'm pulling up my bobbin thread. I'm just going to pretend that uh, I've got a quarter inch seam allowance here. So I want to start my design with the bottom edge of my design about a quarter inch up from the edge. Now I'm going to put my needle down here so you can see what I'm talking about. Now this little ruler, we've got lines on this ruler and there are similar lines on most clamshell rulers. So here's the top edge. I want you to be able to see this. Here's the top edge of the little clamshell design and then the first line there that line is going to line up with the top edge of the previously stitched clamshell and then this bottom edge here this is going to line up with the raw edge here of my quilt um, when i put it on here i can kind of see that my needle is not in the right place yet i'm going to just move this down so that the raw edge of my quilt is right here. So the raw edge of my quilt is right here on the second line. And then I'll go ahead and I'll just keep that there as I work. Now you see here on the other side, on the three inch side, so these are little one inch clamshells and these are all one inch apart. So that's gonna be important in a minute. And these are three inch clamshells. So the distance between here and here is three inches. Now these will both work with this block because we know that this block is four and a half inches wide. So I'm going to be able to do four and a half little clamshells when I get from one edge of the block to the other. And then when I'm doing this side, the bigger ones, I'm only gonna be able to do one and a half clamshells. So that won't be very dense quilting at all, but I wanna do it anyway, it's fine for this quilt. I find that if I'm just kind of keeping in mind how many I'm gonna be able to do, um, it will help me in the long run. So I'm going to practice my good ruler quilting technique. I'm going to have both hands, both on the template and both hands on my quilt. And I've got my sewing machine set to about 50% speed. So I'm just going to put the pedal to the metal and then concentrate on my hands and how fast I'm moving my hands. So I think I am gonna move the needle, move down a little bit just so I'm, my ruler foot is right against the ruler. And there we go. Now I stopped right at the valley of one of these and that's okay. That was just so I could reposition my quilt 
reposition my hands a little bit. For me on these clamshell designs, it is easiest to stop in the valley. Okay, so I stopped on the seam line of this block. So now I'm going to go ahead and start my next row. Now I'm going to pay attention to these vertical lines on the rulers and I'm going to place these vertical lines here that to go to the top edge of each clamshell, this is going to be in my valley now. All right, so now I've got everything arranged the way I want it and I'll just get started. And because I've got a half a clamshell at the end, I am not needing to travel before I make my next row of clamshells. So here we go again. Now, just because I am using a ruler, that doesn't mean that I don't have to watch. Um, the quilting template helps me but this is still free motion quilting and I am still pay paying close attention to make sure that I just kind of bounce at the top edge of each clamshell. Uh, even if the ruler might allow me to go deeper down into this little clamshell, I'm watching carefully and not letting my sewing machine take an extra stitch down into. Uh, the thing with quilting rulers is they're really just a guide. I am not just blindly going where the ruler tells me just because I have a ruler. Uh, I'm still paying attention to where the ruler might take me, not letting it go too far. There's another row. So these are tiny and I'm going to have to do a lot of rows. I think I counted and it was 10 rows. And as I said, if I'm careful and make that first line on the template be just hover right on the top edge of the previous row of clamshells, then it will just make the right size little clams. All right, so let's just go ahead and keep going. I think my biggest surprise when I was learning to use this ruler is that it wasn't really saving me time. Using this ruler and which, you know, I found with almost all quilting rulers is I'm not really saving time, but my designs are, they're more accurate. So I have these little clamshells that are almost all the same size and shape, and that's what the ruler is giving me, not necessarily that it's saving me time. So now here I'm almost to the top, and I can see that this is going to give me almost a perfectly filled square. I've got maybe an eighth of an inch at the top here between the top of my last design and my next block and I am just going to stop there and I'm going to travel stitch in the ditch across and this one is full. I'm not going to try and add any extra little partial clams at the top. There's only about an eighth of an inch and this looks really great to me just the way it is. So there's one, you see that it kind of took a long time doing the little baby clamshells, but I really love how it turned out. It looks great. So now let's try with these three inch clamshells. So knowing that my block here is a four and a half inch block, I know I'm only going to be able to fit one and a half of these clamshells 
in on each row. So that's going to be interesting. So I'll make sure that my needle is right in the corner of the block. And then this first line on the ruler is going to be right on the seam line. Okay, and then for my second row, this first line is the one that's gonna be on the top of the previous clamshells. If I had my quarter inch seam allowance showing like I did on the edge of the quilt, I would put the second line here, right on the seam allowance on the edge of the quilt. But since I don't have the edge of the quilt, I'm going to just look at this first line here and put this on the seam. So let's go ahead and do one and a half little clamshell. Working with these bigger clamshells that you saw that I just kind of stopped, made sure my hands were in the right place to go on, and then I did the second one, or the half one. So I'm just going to get set up for one and a half more clamshells. I've got this first line, this first horizontal line, lined up with the top of my previous clamshells, and I've got the half line here on this one, right on the seam. One thing you should note is that it doesn't matter which of these little clamshells I quilt on. If I feel more comfortable holding the ruler and the quilt like this with this clamshell, doing this one first, I can just go ahead, stop right there at the top of that one, and then move it and do my little half clamshell. There are multiple rulers. In fact, I'll show you one right here, this handy filter ruler that only has one little clamshell of each size. And when I first saw this, I thought, well, you know, that's really dumb. That'll waste so much time because I'll have to move the ruler so many more times. But that really wasn't the case. Um, this little ruler here from Handy Quilter is called the Multi Clamshell. I actually really love it because it has all these different sizes in one ruler. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and set myself up to go back. And I'm not going to be able to fit any more clamshells in this block. So this one, is really cute. It is not quilted very densely because all I had room for is three rows. But I love this look too. I think it's really cool. So now let's go ahead and try some clamshells without using a quilting ruler. So for this block, I'm going to plan clamshells that are about three quarter inches tall and one and a half inches wide. That means that I'll be able to do three clamshells in each pass. And just thinking about doing three is going to help me. So I'm marking some lines that are three quarter inch apart. And I chose this because one and a half and three quarter inch are easily divisible into four and a half inch for my four and a half inch block. So now I'm just going to go ahead and start again in this little corner. Okay, I'm going to get started. And I'm just going to have the top of my clamshell very lightly just touch this line that I marked and then come over and I am imagining three little clamshells here. Now I could have marked this block into thirds, which you can also do, uh, but you might go crazy like I do thinking about so much marking before just getting started quilting. So let's just go ahead and do three little clamshells. Okay, my clamshells are not perfect. The first one is definitely bigger than the last, but that's okay. So now I'm going to travel up because you remember on all of our previous ones, we stopped with a half clamshell right here on the side and I'm not stopping with a half clamshell. So I need to work my way up to the top of the next line and I will start with the half clamshell. So I'm gonna do half clamshell, then two clamshells and then end with a half.
Okay, so now I'm at the corner again on this line and I can do three clamshells going across. So here I've traveled to the top of the next line and I'm going to go ahead and do a half and then a full and then a full and then a half. Now I'm at the corner and I'm going to just start by three full ones. So here are my one and a half inch wide clam shells and they fit nicely in this block. So now I see I have on my quilt, I have one inch, I have three inch and I have one and a half inch clam shells. I picked these sizes because they fit nicely in my four and a half inch block. Knowing the sizes of your blocks and choosing the size of your clamshells to fit inside your block is just one little tip that I can give you that can make your quilting look better and nobody will know why. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keep going and I'll let you watch me. I'm just going to travel up here and I think I'll follow the same pattern. I'll do one inch baby clamshells, then big three inch, and then one and a half inch. And that's just the pattern I'm going to follow with the clamshells in these peachy blocks. So let's go. Awesome. And now, didn't have to travel very far. Here, I've reached the edge of my quilt again. So I'm just going to imagine, and you know what you can do too, is you can also just draw your seam allowance on here, a quarter inch away from the edge, just so that you know where your design is supposed to end so that it doesn't look like your design is going under the book binding. Not that that really matters all that much, but this helps me because I my block is only supposed to be four and a half inches wide and this one's actually four and three quarters because it's got the binding. So now on my other one and a half inch wide clamshells, I went ahead and marked and I did those without a ruler. But since I have a little one and a half inch wide clamshell here on my multi clamshell tool, I'm just going to use it. And I know that I should be able to fit three of these little clamshells. So let's see how it goes. There's one, two, three. And maybe my ruler slipped a little bit. I've got a little extra room than just a quarter here within just a quarter of an inch, but I'm just going to travel here. Now, if you remember on these, I want to start at the top of the clamshell so that I have a half and then two whole ones and then a half. So I have moved my ruler to where this line that goes at the top of the clamshell is right, lined up with the top of the clams here. And my needle is at the top of the template here and I'm just going to go down until I touched that center and I want to stretch this next little clamshell over so I'm so my ruler was here and at the top of the clamps is actually a place where you can secretly stretch or shorten up your clamps so I'm just moving my clamp over a little bit and nobody is going to know that I stretched that one out a little bit to fit. There we go. So 
there's my next row of three. I need to travel. I'm gonna move over here in the seam allowance a little bit. Travel up. So now I'm in kind of a funny spot. It looks like I have room for about half of a clamshell at the top right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to place the ruler in the same place where I have been placing it with this first line here, with the first line here against the top of the clamshell. I'm going to move this first line down a little bit. Now, this will cause me to just have to kind of adjust as I go because I want to do some little shorter clowns. But they still need to stretch over and reach to the middle of the next clown. But it's working okay. I'm just kind of using the ruler as a guide and I stretched those out and made them the right height. So. There you go. I hope you got some inspiration for your color by number quilt on how I did these easy clamshells, mostly using the quilting template, this quilting template from Handy Quilter and this one from So Steady. This one did come in the template set number one from So Steady. If you purchased that, I will put all this information in the blog post and also under the YouTube video so that you can know where to get these if you want, or you could also do this design without the templates if that's what you want. Thanks so much for joining me. If you have ideas for what you want to see on this color by number quilt along, please leave them in the comments because I'll be planning our next block that we'll hopefully do next Friday. Have a great weekend.